Hey everybody, I'm Matthew Laria, and you're watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we'll get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your Word. Lord, we do love your Word. And we ask you today for a revelation of it. We ask you today for grace and help to receive your Word, to put it into practice, and to see it produce and work in our lives. And Lord, I release my faith today over everybody watching the broadcast, and I ask you today, Lord, to minister to them through this broadcast in a great and in a mighty way. I thank you, Lord, for strengthening them, helping them, giving them answers to questions and solutions to problems and grace and help and a supply of the Spirit for their lives and for what they're facing right now. And I do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, last time on the broadcast, we started a new teaching that we're calling Be Ye Thankful. And in this teaching, we are learning about the importance and the power of cultivating a lifestyle of thanksgiving. Now, let's go back over to Colossians chapter 3, and let's look at our foundation text there again in verse 15. Colossians chapter 3 and in verse 15 it says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Come on, friends, say it with me. Be ye thankful. Now, last time on the broadcast, we talked about how that's not a suggestion, that's a commandment. And there's great benefit that will come to us as we begin to cultivate a lifestyle of thanksgiving. Now, on today's broadcast, I want to talk about how to be thankful. You know, we're told a lot that we need to be thankful. But what I found out uh, in, in study and what the Lord showed me is there is a way to be thankful no matter what's going on in your life. You know, sometimes it's, it can be easier to be thankful than others when everything's going well and the sun is shining and, you know, uh, it's very easy to be thankful during those times. But you and I, as believers, we can be thankful even when times are tough. And uh, that's what I want to talk about on today's broadcast, how to be thankful. Now let's go to Psalm 103. And we're going to read some scripture there. Psalm 103 and in verse 1, it says this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Now, the word bless in this verse means to praise. It also means to, to thank or to give thanks. And so you could read it like this. Give thanks to the Lord, O my soul, or praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. And so he's talking about being thankful. But in verse 2, he gives us a major key to being thankful. And he said there, don't forget all his benefits. Now the word forget in that verse means to uh, a lack of memory or lack of attention or to ignore. And so what's he saying? Don't forget. Don't, don't, don't ignore all the benefits, all the good things that God has done for you. All the good things that he promises to do, do for you. Don't forget it. Now, in this verse, he's connecting being thankful with remembering. Being thankful with remembering and not forgetting. See, if you forget all the good stuff God's done for you, then it's going to be impossible for you to be thankful. And so thanksgiving is connected to what you remember. And the more that you think on, the more you focus on how good God has been to you, the more thankful you're going to be. Um, in fact, the psalmist went on to say, 
Um, it says in verse 2, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity. See, he starts to list some of the benefits. He forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And so what he's doing is he's telling his soul, you need to be thankful, soul. You need to praise God. You need to give thanks. And then what he does is he said, don't, don't you forget what God's done for you. Um, don't you forget how he's healed you, how he's forgiven you, how he's crowned you with his loving kindness, how he's redeemed your life from destruction, how he satisfied your mouth with good things. And you can see, friend, what he's doing is by remembering how good God's been to him, it activates, it, it cultivates, it fires up thanksgiving in his heart. And so being thankful is connected to what you remember. In fact, in Psalm 30, we see this again. He says there, I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not made my foes to rejoice over me. Verse 2, O Lord my God, I cried unto you and you healed me. O Lord, you have bought my soul up from the grave. You kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of His, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holiness. Verse 11, you have turned for me my mourning into dancing, and you've put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent, O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks unto you forever. And so here again, you can, you're connecting how thankful we are. The scripture does. It's connecting how thankful we are to what we remember. In fact, it says in verse 4, give thanks at the remembrance of God's holiness. And what he's doing in that psalm is he's remembering how God lifted him up, how God gave him victory over his enemies, how God healed him and uh, brought his soul up from the grave and kept him alive that he didn't go down, down to the pit. And remembering that, putting his mind on that, it started to fire up and activate thanksgiving in his heart. Um, one more verse along those lines, Psalm 9 verse 1, the psalmist said, I will praise you. Now the word praise there is talking about giving thanks. I will praise, I will give thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all your marvelous works. Now the word uh, phrase show forth there actually means I will recount or I will rehearse. And so what he's saying is I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will rehearse all the good things that you've done for me. And see, friend, as you, as you turn your mind and remember and focus on and think about how good God's been to you, it activates thanksgiving in your heart. It, it, it fires it up. <laughs> you can't think about how good God's been to you and complain or be unthankful. No, when you think about how God saved you, how He's healed you, how He's helped you, how He's spoken to you, how He's delivered you time and time again. And when you think about all the good things He's done for you, remembering that is how you fire up thanksgiving in your heart and in your life. Praise the Lord. Now, um, we see the opposite, opposite of this in Scripture as well. That if you forget God and forget how good He's been to you, how quickly that will fire up or activate murmuring in your life. And we see this with the children of Israel over and over again, that they would forget how good God's been to them, and the next thing you would see is they would start murmuring. Why? Because remembering how good God's been to you, that goes with thanksgiving. Forgetting how good God has been to you, that's connected to murmuring. And we see this, uh, again, we see it multiple times with the children of Israel. In uh, Psalm 107, verse 6, it says this, Our fathers understood not your wonders in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of your mercies, but provoked him 
at the sea, even at the Red Sea. And so at the Red Sea, they didn't remember the multitude of God's mercies, the, the things He did for them in Egypt to get them out of Egypt. They had forgot, they forgot that. They were not thinking about that. And then in Exodus 14, 11, look at what they did at the Red Sea. In verse 11, it says, And they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not, is not this the word that we did tell you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. You can see here, you can hear the tone of that in Exodus 14 when they're at the Red Sea. They're not being thankful. They're complaining about where they are. They're complaining about where, Mo, where Moses brought them and what he did. They're not being thankful. And the reason they're not being thankful is because in Psalm 106, it says when they were at the Red Sea, they didn't remember the mercies of God. And so anytime you forget how good God's been to you, it's going to activate murmuring in your life. God said it to me like this years ago, the forgetful mind and the murmuring mouth, these two go together. And so they did that at the Red Sea. They also did this in the wilderness. In Psalm 106 verse 13, it says, They soon forgot His works, they waited not for His counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. And so now they got delivered from the Red Sea and now they're in the wilderness and there's nothing to eat, nothing to drink. And here again, they forgot God's works. They forgot how good He had been to them. And so forgetting is connected to murmuring. And so the next thing we're going to see is them murmuring. And that's exactly what happened. Exodus 16, 2 says, The whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would God that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots? And, you know, they're going on their complaining thing. But they're murmuring in the wilderness because there's nothing to eat. And the reason they're murmuring is because they forgot all the miracles and all the good things God had did for him to get him to the wilderness. Come on, forgetting and murmuring, these go together. They did it at the Red Sea. They did it at the wilderness. And then the third time they did it is on the outskirts of the promised land. Um, it says there in Psalm 106, 21, they forgot God their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and terrible things by the Red Sea, Yea, they despised the pleasant land, that's the promised land. They believed not His word, but murmured in their tents and hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord. And so here again, it said they forgot their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt. And the next thing that happened after, that after they forgot is they started murmuring in their tents. And so, friend, this is true with us. When you are only focused on um, what's not happening in your life right now, when you're only focused on how the things that you're praying for aren't coming to pass, the things you've been speaking over your life aren't happening, the things you're believing God for haven't come to pass, if that's all you're focused on and you're forgetting how good God has been to you to get you to this place in your life, that's going to lead to murmuring. This forgetting is connected to murmuring. Remembering God, remembering how good He's been to you, that is connected to being thankful. And so when you're talking about being thankful, friend, it is impossible to think about... Um, well, let me, let me not go too fast here. Being thankful requires you do something with your mind. You got to begin to, to connect how thankful you are to what you're focusing on. You know, uh, Brother uh, Kenneth Copen uh, is somebody who's ministered uh, uh, to me and Amber over the years uh, tremendously and poured into our life, and we've received from his ministry so much. 
And uh, he was uh, having, years ago, he was having back troubles. And it was in severe back pain. I think he had a, I want to say it was a herniated disc or, or something like that. But he was in severe pain. And uh, he was out on uh, his back porch. And he had been standing on the Word and been believing God. And his healing hadn't come yet. And uh, he was actually listening to uh, Brother Keith Moore minister uh, some messages on being thankful. And uh, Brother Copeland was giving his testimony. And he said, I was sitting out there on the back porch and I was listening to Brother Keith uh, talk about uh, Thanksgiving. And he said, I realized the only thing I was thinking about was how bad my back hurt. And because that's what I was thinking about, he said, I wasn't thankful for anything. And he said, but listen to those teachings, he said, well, he said, I, I started to realize, well, my hands don't hurt and, and my fingers don't hurt and, you know, uh, my arms work good. And, and uh, he started thanking God for these things that, well, my hands are working good and my, my arms are working good and my heart's working good and my organs are working good. And, and then he said, I started thanking God for, for uh, the house we live in and all, you know, the grass and all these good things that the Lord's done. And he said, as he did that, the back pain left. Now, you can see how, as long as he was thinking about how bad his back hurt, that doesn't fire up thanksgiving in your life. But when he started to think about how God had given him healing in other parts of his body and how God had done these good things for him with his house and whatever he was thanking God for, when he remembered that and put his mind on that, it activated thanksgiving in his life. And so, friend, you need to connect how thankful you are to what you think about and what you focus on. Focus on the wrong thing and your mouth will go to murmuring. I need to say that again slower. <laughs> focus on the wrong thing and your mouth will go to murmuring. If you think about what you are not, what you don't have, what you can't do, what hasn't happened for you yet, what hasn't come to pass yet, if you think about things like that, it's going to be impossible for you to be thankful. If you're thinking about what isn't working and, you know, all the things that, you know, you, we, we live in a, ho a house, we built our house, I think, 11 or 12 years ago. And uh, we're blessed. We, we, we're really blessed. Our, our, my grandpa uh, sold us the land at a great price. And, and uh, we're just tremendously blessed. I could look around this house and start going, well, the baseboards aren't painted and this isn't working right. And, you know, the, there's nicks in the floor and, uh, you know, this is dirty and this needs to be painted and this needs to be updated. And friend, if I did that, I wouldn't be thankful for this house thinking like that. No, I, I, I got to focus on the good things that the Lord's done with this house if I want to be thankful for it. And so what you focus on has everything to do with how thankful you are. And it has everything to do with whether or not you will be thankful. Because you cannot be thankful if you focus on the wrong things. Now... You can see there then that thankfulness has nothing to do with your present condition, but it has everything to do with what you focus on. You know, no matter how good you have it, if you focus on the wrong thing, you will be unthankful. I'm talking about you could, you know, uh, have a great marriage, have great kids, uh, live in a nice house, your house be paid off. Uh, you know, your car be paid off, um, you got a great job, your family's healed and whole and well. You could have all of that stuff going right for you and you could start complaining about the weather or about how your lawn doesn't look the way you want it to look if you start focusing on it. Well, my grass is dead and it's growing the way it's supposed to and rah, rah, rah. And you got all these other good things going right and you're complaining because you're focused on the wrong th or the one thing that's not going the way you want it to. And so no matter how good you have it, if you focus on the wrong thing, you can end up being unthankful. And no matter how bad it seems, if you focus on the right thing, 
you can end up being thankful. And that's what Brother Copeland was ministering when he was talking about that example. He was in tremendous back pain. Since then, the Lord's healed him, but he was in tremendous back pain. And even with all that back pain, and you know, it was hard for him to move and all these things, he found a way to be thankful because he stopped focusing on that and started focusing on the good things the Lord has done for him. And so when you're talking about being thankful, you can't just tell people, you know, you need to be thankful. You got to, we, we need to teach you how to be thankful. And the way that you, that the way that you start to be thankful is you start to focus on who you are in God, what you can do in God, what you have in the Lord. And you start focusing on all the good things that he's done for you. And if you do that, it will um, activate thanksgiving in your life praise the lord now let's go to john chapter 11 and we're going to look here at verse uh, 31 and we'll close with this today and so i want to i want to talk to you about something that the lord ministered to me like this i call it the thanksgiving principle and the thanksgiving principle is this that thanksgiving starts with the eyes now i'm not talking about the physical eyes i'm talking about your attention or what you focus on thanksgiving starts in the eyes and if you'll lift your eyes to the Lord and focus on who you are in Him, what you have in Him, what you can do in Him, and all the good things He's done for you, that will activate thanksgiving in your life. That's the thanksgiving principle. The thanksgiving principle is this. It's the lifting of the eyes. The lifting of the focus, getting your focus off of everything that's not going right and getting your focus on the Lord, getting your focus on who you are in Him, what you have in Him, what you can do in Him, and getting your focus on how good He's been to you. That is the Thanksgiving principle because if you do that, you can't do that and Thanksgiving remain dormant in your life. No, that causes it to bubble up. That causes it to bubble over. And so thanksgiving starts with the eyes. It starts with the focus. It starts with the mind, you could say. And the way the thanksgiving principle is this. You lift your eyes. You lift your focus. You lift your mind. You get it off of what isn't working right. And you get it on what is working right. And how good God's been to you. And what He has to say about you. And that will activate thanksgiving in your life. Now, we see this happen in John chapter 11, and I'd love to read the whole chapter, but we just don't have time today um, on the broadcast. But uh, Jesus had gotten a report that Lazarus um, was uh, sick, I believe, and uh, he was uh, heading to, to, to Lazarus to, to pray for him, to minister to him. And um, when he got there, uh, Lazarus, Lazarus was dead. And um, if you read through the chapter, you can see that uh, Mary and Martha um, and Lazarus, these were, these were, they were close with Jesus. They may be his friends, you could, you could say. And um, when he got there, Mary and Martha were upset with him. Um, Mary wouldn't come to see him. And, and both of them, Martha and Mary, blamed Jesus, said things like, well, had you been here this wouldn't have happened. You know, well, what is that? That's saying, where were you? If you were here, he, this wouldn't have happened. And then, uh, you know, Jesus had said a few days earlier, he said, this sickness will not end in the death, but it'll, it'll end in the glory of God. And now here Lazarus is dead. And so it looks like what he says didn't come to pass. Um, and so uh, if Jesus starts focusing on Martha and how she's, you know, upset with him and Mary and how she's upset with him and won't come out to see him. And if he starts focusing on how they're blaming him and if he starts thinking about how, well, a few days ago I said this wouldn't end in death and then it did. And so, you know, what I said didn't come to pass. If he starts thinking about all that stuff, um, he is going to get unthankful. He is going to go down and there's going to be no victory in this situation. But instead of looking at all that, I want, you, I want you to see what the master did in, in verse 41. It says, Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes. That's the Thanksgiving principle. 
and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Now, did you see that, friend? He lifted up his eyes. He didn't focus on Mary and didn't focus on Martha and didn't focus how, on they, how upset they were with him. He didn't focus on how what he said a few days ago didn't come to pass. He didn't think about that. He's not thinking about that. He lifted his eyes and he put them on the Father and that activated thanksgiving in his life. When he looked at the Father, he said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. And friends, you know the rest of the story. Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And out he came and it was a great miracle. But I want you to see the thanksgiving principle. It is connected to the lifting of the eyes. It's connected to thanksgiving coming out of you. So friend, let me encourage you today. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what you're dealing with. But if you've been focusing on what's not working and what hasn't changed, get your eyes off of that. And start thinking about and focusing on what God says, says in His Word. Start thinking about who you are in Him, what you have in Him, what you can do in Him. Focus on how good He's been to you. That will a activate thanksgiving in your life. I want you to notice what happened to the Master after He lifted his eyes and gave thanks. His miracle came for Lazarus. And friend, the same thing can happen for you if you'll lift your eyes Get your eyes on the Lord. Get your eyes on what He says. And remember how good He's been to you. And start being thankful. I believe that's where miracles can begin to take place and happen in that place of thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we do thank You for showing us how to be thankful. Now, we're asking You, Lord, that, it, that if our minds start to wonder and we start thinking about what's not working and what's not changing and what's not happening. We're asking you to correct us by your Spirit. Help us to focus on the right things. Help us to remember how good you've been to us. And help us to not forget how good you have been to us. And Father, as we do that, we know that Thanksgiving will start to bubble up and bubble out and be activated in our lives. And we do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching today's broadcast. Now, don't forget to come back next time because we're going to continue this powerful series entitled, Be Ye Thankful. We'll see you then. Thank you for watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Go to mam.tv to download the free study notes from today's broadcast. You can also request your free copy of our mini book, Faith Declarations. In this book, you'll find declarations from the Word of God that will feed your faith and help you experience victory in your life. Today's broadcast was made possible by the partners of Matthew Alaria Ministries. Go to mam.tv to become a partner today.